vacate the premises. Thank you. Now we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. With the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. Baby, don't you understand? That we only get one life on one. Thanksgiving is this week and Cody and I plan on hosting it, which means we need to get our bed out of our living room. But we're sticking to our plan of not doing this until our bedroom is completely finished, which means today we get to go pick out all of our paint colors and our flooring. We have a ton of places that we need to go today, Menards included, so that way we can get paint colors and carpet and all of that. We're gonna bring you along with us, show you everything that we get and what we end up going with but I know that Cody and I are gonna get hungry. We always get hungry, so I'm gonna make us a really quick breakfast and a few snacks. breakfast sandwiches for on the go and then I just have snacks like apples, oranges, carrots, crackers for both of us. Fruit snacks for Cody and then a liquid IV because he always needs to be hydrated and likes drinking those. But let's make some sandwiches. Aren't we just going to Menards? Yeah, but then we're also going grocery shopping and Home Depot and to your mom's. Okay, and, you're right. We're gonna yeah. need snacks. Yeah, we're gonna need snacks. So I really like Olive Spring. Cody likes Caver Moss. I think that dark isn't going to close the room off too much because there's a lot of light in there with those two windows so I think we are going to go ahead and do the darker one cap and box so super happy with that and we're going to do a satin finish and then with our door trim that's about what we're looking at I think that's so pretty those three in the middle so pretty what a good combo you did good babe you picked them all out It's only 5 o'clock y'all and look how freaking dark it is. Hey guys, we wanted to take a quick break and tell you about our favorite tool we use around the property every day, the EcoFlow Delta 2. We've worked with EcoFlow a ton in the past. And That's a company we swear by. So thank you EcoFlow for sponsoring today's video. With Black Friday coming up, this is a perfect time to snag an EcoFlow product if you've been looking at them in the past. The Delta 2 is a portable power station with a 1,024 watt hour capacity. And it supports up to 1,800 watts running output with up to 2,700 watt surge. That means you're able to power 90% of the appliances in your home. And with the option to add extra batteries, you can increase that up to three kilowatt hours of storage. With that much power and such a lightweight design, this is a total game changer in portable power. So no more lugging around super heavy lead batteries and messing with a bunch of wires to hook up power inverters. And with three different charging options, They make it super easy to make sure you're always prepared with a full battery. And in keeping with the theme of portable power, EcoFlow also offers folding bifacial solar panels. Not only are they super efficient and lightweight, but they also fold up nicely in the included case. 
And I know what you're thinking, why would I need a power bank? Well, these aren't just for camping. With the built-in automatic power switch over, they're perfect for making sure your must-have power appliances stay running in the event of a power outage. So no more worrying about your food spoiling or your CPAP turning off in the middle of the night. And one of my favorite things about EcoFlow that sets them apart from different power bank companies is their app. It's super useful in that you can see how much power you're putting into the power bank, how much power you're using, and tons more features. You can change the charging settings to go from fast charging to slow charging, and you can even download software updates. So if you're in the market for any of these products, EcoFlow is running the biggest promo of the year for Black Friday as we speak, with some even up to 50% off. So this is the perfect time to snag an EcoFlow product if you've been looking at them in the past but have been hesitant because of the price. Check out the links in our description as well as the discount code below so you can find your best choice and best offers on their Black Friday promo until November 28th. Thank you again EcoFlow for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to it. It's the next morning. We ended up having a lot more sanding and mudding to do in the bedroom than we thought. After I went over the room with a fine tooth comb, I found just a few areas to touch up and so that needs time to dry. But it's the next day. I got paint swatches. I'm ready to kind of see how it's all going to come together. So let's go take a look and see what's done. super warm out today so if you see like flies buzzing around it's because they are away from the warmth. We went and picked out all of our paint colors yesterday as y'all saw. I wanted to do some sort of contrast wall. I know that, oh my goodness, I'm not loving the flies. I wanted to do some sort of contrast wall and I know that we got a few comments saying that the room isn't big enough, things like that and I'm fully aware that this is a small space, it is a tiny home. However, I still want a contrast wall either way. Um, I think that it's going to look great in here. So we're going for more earthy tones versus the front of our house is that deep, deep blue color. And here we want more of an earthy tone type of feel. Ended up going with the super pretty sage green that's going to be the back wall where our headrest goes. And then over here, I'll move the camera in just a minute and show you on the wall. But for our main walls that we're going to do throughout the home, we ended up going with an oatmeal. So in our previous home, we did more of like a gray tone and our house was super, super dark. For this home, I went more of like a oatmeal cream color because I really want it to brighten up the space. I'll show you what this looks like on the wall. So I have both of our jugs right here. We ended up going with an interior satin finish. I figure let's swatch the actual colors on a wider span, put them up on the wall, and see how they look. That looks so white. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I think Cody's gonna finish up some last minute sanding and then we'll be ready for drywall paint. 
I think I'm just about done. Do you want to walk through and tell me if you see any spots that you can find that I can't? Show. On most things, we're not really in a time crunch. We kind of have all day, but Thanksgiving is this week. Our bed is in the living room and we're hosting Thanksgiving, which means this room needs to be done. So that's why we're kind of on a time crunch and doing things back to back. Honestly, I looked through it earlier and it looked pretty good. The only thing I didn't look at was the ceiling, which I feel like looks fine. Yeah, I need to get the little spot right there where the ceiling fan box is. There's some a chunk up there, but I don't want to get crap on your door, so I'm waiting on that. But yeah. besides that, I think I'm done. You need to leave the premises, ma'am. <laughs> Anya, go on. It's dusty. Anya. Ma'am. I made him little marks last night that say here with arrows everywhere that I thought he needed to take a double look at. So I'm just kind of going around and looking at those. I would say this right here. Okay. We're good. It looks good. Cool. So, Thank you. I think he just needs to do one right above, but we need to move this wet door, and then there's a little spot over there. Other than that, we're good. And we took a bunch of drywall paint. Ma'am, you can't be in here. Come on. You've been good all day. Okay, y'all. Vacate the premises. Thank you. And while I'm getting the area paint ready, Cody's going to cut the last and final piece of trim. You wanna show them your new toy? Yeah, I got a new nail gun, that way I don't have to lug out the air compressor every time I need to use it. We're finally ready to paint, so let's get this area clean. We're gonna do the same process that we did in the other video, which is wet a sponge, wring it out, and then wipe down the wall to get all the dust off. Cody's gonna take over because my little arms hurt. <laughs> Somebody made a comment the other day saying drywall is a work of art, and that is definitely true. Um, it has been a ton of work and a ton of a learning curve, yes. and it can definitely be very discouraging. So if you do end up doing your own drywall, just have patience, I would say. Look at it and just think, oh, this looks like crap, it's going to be horrible. You know, you got to put multiple coats on and keep going back and back. And one nice thing about it is it is forgiving in the fact that you can go back and fix stuff. For sure. Uh, and, I mean, and, for instance, I messed up this entire side and he went back and fixed all of it. Yeah, the, a lot of the tape was bubbling and peeling up and that was just because we had never taped before. Never so it, yeah. we didn't, you know, really realize that you just got to slop it all on as thick as you can to be able to get it to stick in there. And, you know, there's a couple tricks to it. So... But I did want to show you all a couple tricks that I learned in the process. For your outside corners, always use the metal corners that they sell with the paper face on it. Everywhere we use the metal corners at, it definitely used a lot more mud, but it came out so much cleaner than the places where we just used the paper tape to be able to do the seams. So I definitely recommend if you have to do corners, use the metal corners that they sell. Another trick I learned is if you cut your outlet boxes too big, like this so your outlet doesn't sit flush on the drywall and it kind of sinks into the box because you cut the box too big. It's super easy to fix whenever you're mudding. So you can just take your mud and slop a little bit right underneath the outlets. Obviously make sure there's no power to them so you don't shock yourself. But you can put a little bit in that hole wherever you cut it too big. That way whenever you go to screw it back down, it's got some drywall to be able to sit flush against so it looks nice and clean whenever you're done. And then for the last thing, whenever you're taping, if you think you didn't put enough mud on and it looks like it didn't seal really good and kind of looks like it might peel a little bit, redo it because it's definitely going to peel later. He's pointing at this because that was literally this entire strip Yeah, this right was like the strip that I learned on pretty much. And like I said, you kind of just got to slop it on super thick, put your tape on, and then go back and clean it up with your tool afterwards. 
Nitro sunbathing outside and he's just watching us. Super quick because I'm not gonna feed too much into this. Um, a couple people had asked in a not nice way why our dogs were on leads versus just roaming free and that is for their safeties. They don't know the property plus where we live. We have not the kindest people who have made threats towards the dogs in the past. And so until we have a permanent fence that they cannot get out of, they're gonna continue to stay on leads because it's for their safety. And it's hunting season. Yeah, and it's hunting season. So we definitely don't want them just out there roaming. When we're inside the house and they're out there, they definitely need to be on leads just for their own protection. I think we're gonna start on our fence as soon as the skirting is done because then we'll be able to cut wood for that. But just like everything else, we're cutting our own wood for our fence. But yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. A few people have commented it in a not nice way. If you have questions, we have no issues answering anything. Um, I just, I don't know. They were just not very nice, but yeah, that's why they're on leads, it's for their safety. Get in there. Jiggy with it. According to this, we do not have to do drywall primer unless we're covering up something. Since we're just doing it on plain white drywall, I think it should be just fine, but it will be a true test because if it ends up looking like crap, then we just go to do primer in the living room whenever we do this. Also, I'm in a rush and want it done. Cody and I both have very different priorities on what we want done. But myself, on the other hand, I just want to get the green on the wall. I need to see it, I need to look at it, and Cody's logical and I'm not. So he knows he needs to work on the ceiling first because, you know, that's the order as to which you're supposed to do things. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start painting this bad boy. <laughs> Normally we just use a paint to white ceiling paint, but since we have a bunch of drywall primer, we're just gonna go ahead and use that for now. Yeah, I think once this bedroom's done, I need a new pair of Crocs. I burned them. Yeah, those Crocs right there are a little crusty and dusty. Your dad is gonna love when he comes to the stage now. <laughs> <laughs> He got the ceiling completely done and it looks great. It's definitely going to need a second coat though and then we'll also have to do detail work around each of the lights. I 
I love it. So it's pulling a little light on camera, but it's definitely more of like an olive sage green. We have not done the outer walls yet. We'll probably give this one a second coat, finish up final details on it, and then do the outer walls. I think, I don't know, we'll see. And then he got the first layer done on the ceiling as Joe saw, and it looks wonderful. It'll need a second layer as well. But as we learned from our last house in Texas, I am not good at trim work. I am not good at detail work. So Cody is going to do all of the trimming and edging. But yeah, I love it. It looks great. What do you think, babe? I like it. Do you really though? Yeah, I do. Okay, because you had you weren't you were hesitant. You weren't sure. Yeah, no, I like it. Cool. I'm glad. The light it would bring a ton of good contrast in here I don't know give me your opinions there's a few areas like right here where you can see a nail hole and then just a few other small little ones that we need to go and mess up the wall and touch up so once this layer is dry we'll be able to see a lot more detail in terms of what's messed up and what's not and what needs a little bit of fixing we'll go in with a little bit of spackle and then paint it all mud again. not spackle oh my apologies what is it come on it's Joint, joint compound. compound. Yeah, we get all technical up in here. Yeah. Joint compound, and then we will paint it all again. So, either way, it looks great, and I'm super happy with it. Um, let's do some questions, yeah? Alrighty, if this one is a little bit short, I apologize. We have a lot going on, and so I want to be able to get a lot of videos out to you, which means that one or two of them may be a little bit short because I'm filming every single day, so start to finish each day. But, anyways. Patrick says, what is the plan for the exposed pipes under the home, at least until it's sealed? The only thing exposed under the home is drains Drain for the water drains. system, and there's nowhere that has standing water in it that's exposed. Mm -hmm. So we're not really at any risk of freezing. We're not really worried about them, and we haven't had any issues with any of them. For probably like the last four or five days, wow. we like it was below freezing oh, every single so day. Bad. The pond froze over and everything, and we didn't have any issues with the water, so we're not really worried about it. Yeah, super, super thankful with how things have turned out, but we'll continue to monitor it, and if anything changes, we'll definitely let you know. Yeah, and I also just got a remote uh, temperature sensor to put in the pump house, that way I can monitor it all the time and see if it ever gets too cold in there. Um, and then if it does get too cold, it sends me an alert on my phone, so. Stephen B says, hi guys, have you thought of ways to reduce the heat loss with your windows during winter? This is definitely something that we've struggled with just because I personally wanted a ton of windows in my house. I need a lot of light for my mental health. With that, we struggle heat loss, obviously, because glass is, you know, yeah, and that was a big discussion we had during building the house too, is she wanted, she wanted even more windows than oh, this. Yeah. I mean, she wanted basically just the a entire, lot of windows. Yeah. And, you know, so we had to keep kind of going back and forth of, you know, adding more windows because we want the natural light versus we're going to lose a lot of heat and it's going to be harder to keep it cool in, in the summer and all that stuff. To combat it, we basically just been putting dark out curtains on them. Eventually we'll get um, permanent blinds and things like that, but it's not so much an issue right now or something that we're worried about right now. We're definitely going to want to make our house more cost effective in the future, but it's just not a huge priority and that's not something that we want to dump a bunch of money into. They're energy efficient windows, so they really don't get too, too cold, but they do still get a little bit cold, obviously. So it's not a huge issue, but we mostly just try to put, you know, thick curtains up at, at nighttime. Dan says, I'm worried. When you're done with everything, will you still make videos? You guys are fun to watch. Well, thank you, Dan. 
Um, we definitely will still make videos, so this house probably isn't going to get done anytime soon, especially with it just being Cody and I and all the detail work that I want to put into it, but there's a bunch more things that we want to do on the property. I want a ton of animals, so we'll eventually have to build a mini little farm, and then he wants a bar in the woods, zip line. He wants a chef and workshop, eventually we'll have kids, and so yeah. we'll have there's to do all of them. There's definitely not a shortage of projects, no, so we're, sure. we're going to be here a while. Yeah, so definitely more videos to come in the future. We have a lot, um, we have a lot of stuff planned, so see you in a little bit. Bye! Bye. Baby, don't you understand that we only get one life away?